Hi there, everyone. It's Liz Jury here, your tax advisor accountant. Um, I specialize in e-commerce and retail industry. And uh, welcome, welcome again um, to another episode. Um, I have recorded uh, recently a series of, I call it um, mini uh, uh, you know, episodes and solo episodes um, because I do, um, for some of you who are not familiar with me, but um, I have been doing a podcast for the past two years and I do have a YouTube channel channel if that's where you're watching me from and um and one of the things i've done is i have interviewed many experts but i decided to go back and do a little bit of solo episode because there's certain things that i get like i said whether you know inquiries or people ask me the same question over and over and i thought what better than just you know create a, a small um you know a video and and hopefully talk about that which is i think a lot easier um instead of doing blogs and, and I don't know, I'm not too much into writing um, as, as it is my nature is numbers and, and, and taxes. Uh, but anyhow, I want to talk to today is going to be about, and like I said, this is a series of episodes. Um, one of them I already talked about, if you haven't seen it, by the way, it's about which states have no sales tax. That's right. No sales tax. Another one I also recorded about professional services being taxed in certain states. Yep. So that means it's not about you selling a product online, it's about you selling a professional service and you can get tax for it and uh, something that you can look into that episode. But this episode is gonna be about, oh boy, penalties and interest and what happens when you do not file your sales tax. Uh, it, uh, folks, it is a nightmare. Um, so here goes a few, a few things that I wanna kind of bring up to your attention. Number one, even for whatever reason, you're not sure that how much you owe in taxes because unfortunately you haven't kept track, whether it's through you know an accounting software like QuickBooks or uh, an Excel sheet, whatever it is that you're using to calculate and keep track of your expenses and your income, then at least file an extension. Okay, and a lot of times not extension, uh, zero. File zero, just file zero, okay? And as soon as you have that number, and what I mean is don't, don't think because you file zero, that means you have a year now to file that return. No, <laughs> that means at least it allows you to give you at least a couple more days. And I always tell this to people, no matter what, um, you know, finally you do, you want to go ahead and amend and rectify that as soon as possible. The longer you wait, the situation can get worse, right? So even if you're not sure about something, file zero. Really, just file zero. But do it, especially if you're in a month-to-month -month sales tax reporting, okay? Some people are quarterly. Some people are, you know, annually, all right? But make sure that even if you do not know the amount, or if you do, let's say you have an estimate, and you say, well, you know what? I know I sold, you know, five thousand dollars worth of, you know, of, of service or products this 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 month. Uh, let me go ahead and pay that sales tax. Uh, you know, for an example, if you're in the state of Florida, it's almost seven uh, percent the, the state tax. So in that case, you will pay that seven percent against that amount. And even if it's not precisely because you do have, you get a little allowance, a little discount there, which is not major, but it's like less than I think two or three percent. Uh, pay it. And then if, if, if it's less, then you take the credit for the next filing. You know, if it's more, then you cut another check. You make another electronic payment to, to, to Department of Revenue, right? Uh, but make sure that, that that's just the first thing I really, really, to me, it's extremely important because I see so many people that when do, they do not file because they scratch their heads and like, Liz, I didn't know how much I was supposed to pay. You know, I started my business or perhaps, you know, I took over someone else's business. It was a family business or I just acquired this business. Whatever might be the situation, by all means, like I said, do an estimate, you know, look at the, the numbers, you know, and, and, and say, okay, uh, especially in your home state, <laughs> especially that, and, and look at it because like I said, if you're selling products in your homestead, you must collect tax. You have to collect your sales tax, okay? And, and watch out because one of the other episodes, I talk about professional services. There's some specific industries that are just service and they are being also imposed the sales tax, 
okay? So remember, if your customers don't pay you the sales tax, you need to pay. And here's the problem where I say file even with zero balance, but file before the deadline, okay? And, and, and the reason why I'm saying that is because if not, you will be assessed a penalty, a late penalty for just not filing. So while you might think, oh, I, I don't know how much it is, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how to do an estimation, uh, you know, I, I, I never done this before, whatever might be the situation, go ahead and file before the deadline and at least put zero. You can always go back and amend and pay the difference or maybe not pay anything. Again, it depends. I mean, if you owe money in sales tax for that state, right? Um, but do that because if not, these are the consequences that I'm going to explain. Number one, they're going to start charging you 5%, 5% per month, up to 25%. So think about the first five months, okay? You already got 25%, okay? And, And here's the problem with that. You know, and, 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 and I'm sorry, let me go back. The 5%, it's really a penalty for money that you owe, okay? So if you knew you had a tax liability, even though you didn't have precision, you still have to pay it. Because if you're not, they're going to impose a penalty for that money that you did not pay. And the reason behind that is because sales tax, is what's called a trusted fund. What is a trusted fund for legal terminology? It's like a payroll, right? They don't want you to mess around with payroll taxes, right? Because you deduct it from your employee, the Social Security, Medicare, and you must pay it out. As you earn the money, you must pay taxes and you must send it to the government, okay? That's the same things with sales tax. A lot of people don't realize that. They think, oh, well, that's not internal revenue. That's not social security, that's not Medicaid. No, but this is the state, okay? The state wants their money. And if you're not willing to pay them on time when there's a deadline for a reason, there's a deadline, imagine if there would be no deadline, people would pay whenever they want it or never will pay at all. <laughs> so unfortunately, because we do have deadline, for some of you might see it that way, then you wanna make sure that if you owe money, remember you're gonna get penalized 5% per month. So to avoid that, at least go ahead and, you know, pay an estimated and then amend, you know, the return later on. Now going back, and I want to rectify this, what happens is a late fee is different. A late fee is something that they will charge you. If you don't file not even zero, you say, well, I don't care. I was insureless. I have no clue. I have some bad news on that. You know why? Because what happens is, when the city feels like you ignore them, it's like the government, <laughs> like the feds. They're like, oh, really? Well, guess what? I'm going to charge you a late penalty. And that happens with a regular tax return or 1040 is the same thing, right? We have those six month extension. Well, guess what? In the state, if you do not file before the deadline, even if you just put zero, just by doing that, you will avoid what's called late penalty, which could be anything from $100 minimum up to 100% of your liability. So think about that for a moment. So if you don't file, they could come back. In a lot of them, they have like a $50 flat rate too, like it happens here in the state of Florida. If you don't file, automatically, boom, they hit you with the $50. So if you're a monthly filer, you're accumulating $50 in penalty every single month. And now, before they used to be a lot more lenient about, you know, kind of waving, well, uh, now they don't want to at all. That's it. Okay? So, again, please remember what I'm saying to you. I'm trying to help you where... Hopefully, you can avoid now wasting your money, goodness, uh, you know, and, 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 and that way you can grow your business because, you know, I sell online and, you know, through my professional services, you know, right now, I don't have issues of selling sales tax, but like I said, there's certain states that I even need to be careful that they will charge me sales tax if I send an invoice. Without that, 
I can get in trouble. Okay, even as as an accounting industry. Okay, so again, if you're selling whatever it is, make sure that you have at least you send a zero return, or at least you do an estimated tax payment. Okay, and remember always before the deadline. So anyhow, I hope this has helped a little bit. I think I went a little longer than expected, but I really want to emphasize the importance behind it because I, I just it, it really bothers me when I see, you know, prospect clients, especially coming to me and say, well, my last accountant, my, you know, my last, you know, bookkeeper or, you know, my, my, my spouse or whoever was taking care of that kind of thing, uh, didn't do it. And now when we, or it's almost like opening a can of worms because then now you have to go back to the state and say, oh, I've been in business for, you know, a few months or a few years and mm, I haven't collect the sales tax. So anyhow, to avoid that, we're here for you, um, you know, uh, my team and myself. And if you need any help, especially when it comes to, you know, doing a, um, you know, an analysis and a checkup, what we call from Nexus exposure, whether you have, you know, not only physical, you know, exposure, meaning that you have, you know, a location, a store, uh, but even if you're selling, which is really what they call economical presence, which is the new thing with the court um, that came out a few months ago, and Wayfair lost the case, right, against the tax court, uh, because they decided, hey, you know what, I don't care, you don't have physical presence here, you're still selling. So we're going to tax you for that. So please be careful. Um, again, knowledge is power. And if you need anyone to give you a good checkup and find out where you have exposure, we're here to help you. We can do that and we can set you up with, uh, you know, online software to do that. We can do it ourselves, whatever it is that, but do the smart thing about, you know, avoiding having to waste your money, money really in penalties and interest, which I'm sure it could go back into your business and, and, you know, reinvest and do something a bit better. So anyhow, this story again here, and like I said, there's a bunch of episodes and things that you can watch and listen about e-commerce. I have actually um, interviewed great people and guests also um, talking about this topic and things that can help you also grow um, and market your business online. Um, through some of my expert guests that I have interviewed in the past. Well, anyhow, it's been a pleasure. And again, welcome if this is your you know, first time here with me. And like I said, like, share, and subscribe. And you can contact us through the website or any of the other social media accounts that I have. Thank you so much. And until next time, and like I said, reach out if you need something and uh, we're here for you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye-bye.